as a leader or rather as a manager, you are trying to achieve desired results without bad surprises. A good day at the office is a day without the need to mop up yesterday's crisis. Yet, problems happen and you need to problem solve or, or have your team to do it. So you use the five whys to get to the root cause. But you know what? It usually takes some effort and it doesn't always work. So how can you make it easier and more effective to use the five whys? Within Walking Distance is a series giving tips, tools and reflections for leadership. If you are new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the links relevant to this video that you will find in the description box below. MP. So let's answer the question. How can we use the five wires more effectively and easily? I'm going to give you three tips to overcome common pitfalls I've experienced over the years when using the tool. First, two definitions. What is a problem? There are several good definitions out there, but this one is easy to remember. The problem is an obstacle on your way to achieve a desired condition. There are gremlins on our way to success. Symptoms of something wrong. It is the surface problem. For example, the car didn't start this morning. The machine is breaking down three times per shift. This shipment has too many defects. Or that customer payment is 45 days in arrears. But to eliminate this problem, we need to dig deeper from the surface problem to the fundamental reason for the problem. And that's the root cause. So Sakichi Toyoda of Toyota developed the good habit of interrogating what was the cause of the effect by asking why a number of times until the root cause of the problem as well as the solution to it was clear. So the second definition for the five whys is an iterative technique used to explore cause and effect relationships underlying a particular problem in order to find the root cause. Interesting enough, it could take less than five whys or much more to get to the root cause. So the Japanese call it why why and not five whys. Hey, maybe if you ask enough times, you'll get to right back to the first industrial revolution. Okay, what are the usual, usual pitfalls? Pitfall number one, five whys is not the identification of five possible causes. It is really finding relationships between cause and effect, the cause and the symptom. For example, this is a correct use of why why. The car didn't start because the battery was dead, because the alternator wasn't functioning, as opposed to an incorrect use of why why. The car didn't start because the battery was dead or because there was no petrol or because the driver didn't push the brake pedal when starting. To identify multiple causes and prioritize them, you could use a fishbone diagram or simply make a list. Pitfall number two, don't assume that you have found an answer to a why. Prove it. One of my clients in the Netherlands likes to say, assumption is the mother of all screw ups and that's a loose translation. If you don't have evidence of the cause, you cannot move to the next why. This is sloppy armchair root cause analysis. It might make the team feel good, but it will not get you to the root cause. Wasted time. So you might have to stop your root cause analysis and get to the place where you can find evidence. It takes time. Pitfall number three, don't stop asking why too early. If you do that, you will apply effort and resources to correct the symptom. But the, the root cause is still there. Give it a bit of time, the problem will manifest itself again. 
However, in certain conditions, it is appropriate to manage the symptom. It's a bit like taking a painkiller or an anti-inflammatory until the treatment takes full effect and heals you. For example, it may take a long time to apply a solution to the problem, or you cannot find the root cause, or there are multiple root causes, or it is too costly to eliminate the root cause. In these situations, applying a countermeasure will reduce the impact of the cause. The problem is less severe or it happens less frequently. I have added a few classic YY examples in the description box below. Now that you have found the root cause, you and your team feel good. Well done. It's an achievement. It takes time and effort to get there. Don't relax. Find a suitable solution and test it. Take action now. Otherwise, just finding the root cause has a placebo effect, like feeling better on your way to the chemist because the doctor told you that you had a common cold, another brain cancer. You are not healed yet. Why, why? is simple in principle, but there are many other pitfalls and tips that wise people can share with you. Do you know why? Because they practice YY. They are experienced. If as a leader and manager, you develop the habit of asking why, why, it will take a good chunk of your anxiety away. Why? Because you regain more clarity and control. Why? because you and your team eliminate problems or reduce the impact of their causes. Why? Because you have developed the habit of asking repetitively why with respect. You take action and you follow up. And this is the good quote for this episode. Edward Stemming is quoted, without data, you're just a person with an opinion. Isn't this beautiful? If you are one of the first three people able to identify the location of this view, you can meet with me for a free hour of leadership coaching. Here is a clue for this dangerous location. It's on the west coast of South Africa. Just write the location in the comment section and send me an email at wwd at mp.solutions. Also, you may have a need to improve on your leadership skills, turn them into good habits, or you need support to transform your organization. I can help you. Feel free to connect. I'll be posting the next episode in two weeks. In the meantime, lead well, don't assume.